I have just organized all my manga, so I think I might just do a quick collection tour. Would you guys be down if I did a quick collection tour? I say quick, it'll be like 40 minutes. Do it, guys. Yours is 10 hours? Yeah, but you're just showing off now, okay? This is my stream. What about you, Caitlin? I won't be able to see chat because otherwise this will take probably two hours if I turn around and talk. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about this each series that I have and then I'll come back. Be nice to each other. Don't be mean. Insert mean comment. No, be, be nice to each other. And hopefully you guys can... Let me turn off this mic. All right, so this is the collection. Shoujo on top, obviously, because you know, Shonen is, is bottom. Start off with three volumes of QQ Sweeper and then followed by Queen's Quality Supernatural series about cleaning bugs, I guess, inside people's minds, which is like a metaphor for sweeping up depression and stuff. Uh, the main protagonist is super interesting. I'm looking forward to watching her grow and become more powerful. Kind of similar if you enjoy it, like Jujutsu Kaisen. It's um, kind of similar vibes. And Imakoi, nice little cute high school romance series. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I didn't really enjoy the second half of volume two because it included the main guy's sister and that was kind of meh. We have Made Summer 1 to 12. I am probably going to wait until I click the rest of it before I binge the whole thing. I really enjoyed the anime years ago um, so I'm looking forward to getting this one. My Love Mix Up, I've been really enjoying this one. I've been buddy reading this with Dragon Ball Zoe from like volume five, I think. It's super good. There's a little bit of miscommunication at the beginning, but that soon gets wiped away. And the two boys are just absolutely amazing. I love them both. The facial expressions are very good. It's both parts, romance and comedy. It's absolutely hilarious. I would suggest everybody pick this one up. My Secret Affection, volumes one and two, not read volume two. There's only two volumes, 10 chapters. Requiem of the Rose King. This one I had to read twice, volume one, because I couldn't get my head wrapped around it. It revolves around, it's set in like, I think a civil war that happened in England sometime. I don't know what, what war it is, I'm sure somebody knows. Once I read volume two, it all kind of clicked into place and then I read volume three online, bad me. I picked up the Earl and the Fairy just on a whim because it was on eBay super cheap. I have no, no idea what it's about. Rose and Blood, hot vampire trash. I didn't really enjoy volume one, but I enjoyed volume two, three and four. Unlike most people, so I'm looking forward to volume five and I'll probably reread the whole series once again. A condition called Love, I've got one and two. There's another high school romance, pretty sweet. Main character is considered quite stalkerish and a bit intense. I think he's quite just open about his feelings. My Happy Marriage, oh my days, this was amazing. I'm so glad Liddy got me to pick this up. She's been treated terribly like Cinderella. He doesn't like anybody because he thinks all girls are pompous and up their own butt. I don't really know, I can't really tell if he likes her initially, but I could imagine towards maybe volume two or three, they'll start having feelings for each other. But yeah, I'm looking forward to, to reading the rest of it. Continuing the shoujo shelf, I need a little bit more. Meson Ikuku, I think this is considered a shoujo. I don't know, I think this is seinen. I got Rumiko Takahashi here just because, I don't know, it fits the same size. It's a Viz Sig. Pretty good. I don't think it's particularly aged well. I know a lot of people enjoy this one. It was set, I think, in the 80s. Sweet Blue Flowers, this is pretty nice. If you take away volumes two and three, I think it could have been wrapped up in just these two volumes. These are two and ones as well, so four volumes would have been perfect. Eight volumes, a little bit too much. A little bit too much guff in the middle. And then Furuba, Fruits Basket. I'm sorry to say, Dragon Ball Zoe, but I did stop reading this one during your April readathon. Not that I don't like it, I'm going to finish it. I just didn't get gravitated towards any of the characters, really, other than um, Kyo, the, the cat. I think everyone's supposed to like Kyo, though, because he's like an outcast. They've all got super depressing backstories, and I think that's what it kind of plays on. It expects you to sympathize with a lot of the characters, and then I'm sure towards, I think I'm at volume nine, uh, no, volume 14. I think probably after that, I'll probably get like a conclusion to a lot of their backstories and why they are the way they are. And then I'll probably feel really connected. And then a side of affection, another school romance, but they're in college. And the main girl is deaf and the main dude, Yuki, is super, super hot, super attractive and super just attentive to her. And he's super interested in her. He wants to learn sign language. He learns all these other languages. He's super cool. In the Clear Moon It Dust, another high school romance series, but the main girl is deemed like a prince by most of the people because she's like quite mannish. She's quite tall, slender. And the main dude kind of takes her, he's attracted to her and she's like taken aback because no one's ever found her attractive. Going on to the Shonen. Shonen? Yeah, Shonen. So One Piece, everybody knows One Piece. If you don't know One Piece, you will eventually read it at some point because you will be obligated to do so. And you'll fall in love just like everybody else. Shout out to volume 44, my favorite volume of all time. And every chapter hit like a ton of bricks. I laughed, I got hype. 
I cried so many tears and yeah onwards it just gets even better it's not just an action shonen series about adventure it's a world building series so if you enjoy in-depth lore and characters and <laughs> reoccurring characters that there's characters that show up in like vo like these volumes that are absent throughout all of these ones and they show up here and you're like, damn, how has he thought this far ahead? It's crazy. In the Marshall, everyone says it's Harry Potter meets One Punch Man. Dude comes in and doesn't know magic and just punches everything to resolve his situations. And for some reason, for the most part, nobody knows that he doesn't have magic. So it's kind of strange, but it's really good. It's really interesting. And then Jujutsu Kaisen, everyone's favorite at the moment. Um, if you're into like action shonen, supernatural series. Similar to Chainsaw Man as well, although this is like more, I guess this has demons as well. But these both kind of have demons. I both, I like both of these because, more so because of the art style. I do enjoy like the sketchy, unfinished, unpolished art style of these two. And the stories are just great. If you enjoyed the anime for Chainsaw Man and thought it was kind of subpar, you wait until this comes out. It's around here, I think it will start season two. And then I got a few short stories for Tatsuki Fujimoto, who did Chainsaw Man. And Sakamoto Days, about a dude who owns a shop and he used to be an assassin. And then everyone tries to kill him. And he's fat and then he's not fat. And then he meets loads of cool characters and it's funny. And they've got loads of action. Blue Box. Then we have Zombie Powder. Um, he was uh, Tate Kubo's first work before Bleach. And only have the four volu four, first five volumes. I had these back in 2006, 2007, and I haven't bought any more. And then Burn the Witch, which is his new series. It says volume one, but volume one came out like two years ago and he's not done anything since. And this is probably one of my favorite shelves. This is Dragon Ball. Obviously everyone knows Dragon Ball. It was the, uh, I guess you could say the grandfather of what is modern day action shown in now, Dragon Ball Z, and then Dragon Ball Super, which continues even now. And then Naruto, I've only got the first half. I say it's the first half, it's like, pre-time skip and if you don't know Naruto you may know him as Boruto's dad and then Yu-Gi-Oh! R this takes place after the Duelist Kingdom when Yu-Gi beats or fights Marek I don't even know if he beats him in the end I presume he does because he wins like almost everything he's only lost like twice in his life Barrage which is the first work of um, the dude who did My Hero um, I cry every time Deku punches the bad guy Promise Neverland everyone's favorite Shout out to volume 6 to 11, Goldie Pond. Probably the best arc in the series. It's a shame they never adapted it in the anime. Like supernatural demons, like the kids don't have any powers or anything, but it's kind of a cross of like Death Note with like the mind games and then like the action, like thriller aspect is also there as well. And then the demons from like, I know, there's not a lot of action, but when there is, it's super stunning. People say it got rushed really quickly, but I thought it was you know, wrapped up as well as it could. I feel like most people just get so salty when it comes to endings. Then Nisekoi, I've mentioned this before a few times. They established the character, the main harem from like volume one to like volume eight, nine. And then they just keep doing the same thing over and over again for a while. If you're super invested, then yeah, you're going to enjoy it. But I think you could just cut this bit out and just go straight to like volume 22. Then Shaman King, um, another supernatural action series. I only found out last year that Viz never printed all of the singles. They only printed up, I think they missed out, they didn't do the last three or four, which begs the question, why bother going that far in the first place? Just just release them. I didn't don't understand why they didn't. Um, super out of print, the singles. It's unlikely that I'll finish it. So I think I might just bite the bullet, sell it off, and then buy the, the, um, the new omnibuses. Hun uh, Hunter's Guild Red Hood. This is the artist who helped with My Hero. He went and did his own, own series. I think I haven't read the volumes but probably towards the end of volume one and volume two was a training arc and it stayed in the training arc way too long and then it's it's uh, popularity plummeted and because it wasn't gaining popularity it just yeah it just dragged on. Undead Unluck I don't really know how to explain this one after volume one it doesn't really become like an action a traditional action shonen series until probably like volume five or six and then Death Note this is probably the series in my collection that I've read the most probably read it like five six times and I've also given this these specific volumes to so many friends and family members, forcing them to, to read it. I got the 13th volume, How to Read. This actually has Elle's real name in it. You can just Google it, but I thought it was quite interesting. It comes in a nice card. And then this came out last year. This is uh, Short Stories. Annoyingly, you get the original one shot, which was also included in the volume 13. But you get a couple of other bits of information about Elle 
and also a nice big one shot about like I think it's like a 10 15 year uh, time skip after the events of volume 30, uh, 12 and it kind of gives you what the Death Note would be like in modern day with like smartphones and modern technology and then we have Ma I can't remember what it stands for something something romance um it's an isekai um boy gets transported obviously comes super strong and he has to figure out how to get out and he finds a princess along the way and he wants to help the princess between like volumes 3 and 12 13 is just a big tournament arc and then 14 15 like he beats the the main bad guy and then it's and then it's all happy days uh, typical shonen series and um, pretty good just um went on a little bit too long and then Cowboy Bebop 1 and 2. I don't know if this is like the original or if it's like a continuation. And I think there's a volume 3, but I can't find it anywhere. And Seven Deadly Sins, another action shonen series. I'll probably get rid of these and just go for the Omnis. Negima, harem series. It's really hard to find the singles and it's like 30, I think, volumes maybe. Correct me if I'm wrong. So I probably won't get those. And then Maggie, I don't know anything about this one other than it's like... I think set in like the Arabian Nights kind of era. I don't know. I have no idea. There's a dude with a lamp. And then Love Hina, another harem series. I just really wasn't feeling it, especially after I, I read it shortly after I read uh, Misa Queer, so I wasn't really like too into it. Bakuman about, what is it about? About mangaka making manga and it's super emotional and I cry every single time. Well, let me just quickly itch my, itch my hand. Also, I just want to get some water. So continuing from Shonen, also going back up to more Shonen. My Dress Up Darling, the hit anime from last year. I think it was last year. So I hope it just finishes soon. Otherwise, it's going to get a bit too tedious. There's only so many outfits we can see Marin in. And she is also 15, so be careful. Uh, Legend of Zelda. This is the collection of everything that happened between uh, before Twilight Princess. Um, I'm going to do a big binge again because I did read up to Volume 9. I'm going to read uh, the whole thing again and 10 and 11. And hopefully at some point play Tears of the Kingdom. And then if you like Dragon Quest, uh, Dragon Ball, you are going to enjoy The Adventures of Dai. Sadly, they only released the first three omnibuses, Action Adventure, similar art style to Kira Toriyama. Um, yeah, it's great. Another one that's just finished, I uh, think people were a little bit upset towards the end. I think maybe it went on too, too long. That's the thing with time travel. You go back and forth so many times, it gets a little bit tedious. I know Weeb Dad and Weeb Mum have a bit of an issue with the art style and the fact that they're like, 13, 14, doing like proper gang delinquent stuff and yeah, they just weren't, in, weren't really into it. But I think it's great. I'm looking forward to continuing it. This is Akira Toriyama's um, manga theater. It is just a bunch of short stories that he's made throughout the years, compiled into one big omnibus. Nice little hardback. And then my favorite video game franchise of all time turned into manga, Kingdom Hearts. It's Kingdom Hearts 1 and then Chain of Memories, Kingdom Hearts 2, which is Duffus. I don't know why this one is so chunky. 358 over two days and then Kingdom Hearts 3. There's still so much context that is missing. I still stand by the fact that I don't believe this is a great adaptation for newcomers. If you're already a fan, this is the most funniest version of the game, of, of the story. Um, and if you play the games, you already know a lot of the context. And then Hulk. This is really good. I'm really enjoying the fantasy series that I've been picking up lately. This one's pretty funny, more than the action. Um, I just hope it picks up a little bit uh, soon. I know some people want interest from, from volume one. I'm looking forward to volume three. Probably give it a few more volumes before I make a proper pro proper comments on it. But at the moment, it's a good fantasy series. Comey can't communicate one to four. I've been told if you enjoyed the first two or three volumes, you enjoy the rest of it. So I enjoy the first four. So I'll probably pick up the rest at a later date. Go Go Loser Rangers. This was definitely a big surprise. I thought this was about Power Rangers, but it's about the bad guys infiltrating the Power Rangers, basically. Kaiju number eight, I'm pretty behind on this now. I stopped reading it digitally because I was enjoying picking it up physically. I also haven't read these two, I don't think. Uh, Shadow's House, I don't see this one that often. I didn't realize it was so long. I think it's there's quite a few volumes out in Japan. The soot people live in the mansion and the people who have faces have to clean up everything. Pe the people with real faces are treated like servants and then the people who have soot are like the hierarchy. Um, this is by an author I don't know, but the artist is Obata, who does Death Note and Bakuman. Then Dead Man Wonderland. A lot of people praised this last year because the, the reprints were coming out and oh, how good it was. Honestly, I think this, it started off solidly. 
Uh, the middle was kind of pretty good, and then it dipped off towards the end, and then the ending was terrible because I didn't like the villain. His reason for doing everything was just so boring. Then Toriban Hanukukun, I've actually, why are these the wrong way around? This should be, no, let's skip over this one because I can't look at this any longer. Atom, the beginning, very good mecha series prior to Astro Boy, which I don't think I'm ever going to get. Oh, it's going to be so hard to collect them. I would love to read them. There's so many. I like the concept of the AI developing so much faster than they anticipated. It's a little bit of mystery. I think maybe it wouldn't be as much of a mystery to me if I'd already read Astro Boy, but who knows? I'm enjoying it. Oh, this is wrong way around as well. This goes over here. One Punch Man. Um, as the title suggests, everyone knows One Punch Man. It's the dude who punches everyone in one punch and then they all die, except from that one time. Then we have Oh My Sweet Alien. This is about an alien that lives on Earth and marries a human and she has to wear a human skin. It's really etchy, not really etchy, but there's like boobs and butts and stuff. Boys Run the Riot. A little bit upset that volume two is so much lower than the rest, but then it is Kodansha, so their printing is pretty terrible. Pink by the Manko did Hell Skelter, which I haven't read. Arc tells me it's very good. Yeah, really good. Art style is took a while to grow on me, but it's pretty good. The back of the the back of the book says it is love and capitalism. And there's a crocodile, and I, in this, the crocodile could be replaced with anything that you uh, consume, whether it be handbags, manga, or anything. And it's kind of like a metaphor sort of thing. Fan girl, this is pretty good. That girl who goes to college. I think it's based on a novel, an, an IRL novel from this woman in America. They got turned into a manga. I don't know how many volumes they're going to be. Don't know something across the moon. Nice little Yuri series. I have been struggling to find volume three for a while, but I really enjoy this one. And then Beyond the Clouds, I really want to pick this one up. Just about this dude who finds this girl with one wing and then go on this like little fantasy adventure. It's just, I'm, I'm really enjoying fantasy. I've read so much like seinen and battle shonen recently that it's nice to read just fantasy so and so i'm probably going to get the box sets i picked up volume one and two from geeky's recommendation to strip the flesh this is a bunch of short, short stories but the main story again similar to boys on the riot is about a girl i think it's a girl who um goes under the knife to transform into a uh, transition into a male and her relationship with her father and how she deals with it it was quite insightful quite interesting and then the other short stories are crazy. I like the one with David. That was pretty cool. Finland Saga, don't have to say anything about this one. Great Satan series. And I need volume seven, which I can't find for love or money or my uh, sanity. Uh, this is, what is this? Stargazing Dog is about a dog, a man and his dog. And it's super sweet and it's super wholesome until, well, really it's not wholesome because the first page kind of spoils the ending. But if you skip the first page, it's really nice and wholesome, and then you get really sad towards the end. This is vampire trash, but they're not vampires, so it can't be vampire trash. So it's cool, shonen, guys who like to eat people, and women who like to eat people. It's awesome. Then we have some one-shots. We got Downfall by Yuno Asano. Um, I vaguely remember this one. I feel like in your, uh, Downfall and Solomon were very, very similar about people who weren't really interested in their jobs, their relationships were failing. Well, this one was slightly different. But yeah, it kind of like, don't know what you're doing with your life, coming of age sort of thing. Although this one was coming of age, the, the girl was quite young. This one, the dude is a little bit older, I think, maybe in his early 20s, mid 20s. We need to kill again, Mangaka, who, not man, oh yeah, the artist of Death Note, Abata's art just astounds me. I just want to have a collection of all of his works. I just love his art style. It's just beautiful. Tomatsumoto's number five. This one was recommended to me by Zach from Uchu Shelf. And I definitely am going to read this one again. I read it last year and I enjoyed it so much. I read the first one when it first came out and then it was ages before I read these two. Alice in Borderland. I'm going to be picking up more of this as well. This is just a death game. Does anyone know how long this is? I hope it is. I hope it's not too long. But yeah, it's pretty good. I see that Caitlin picked this up a little while ago and the spines turn into like a big, like... You see all the buildings and everything in the town that they're in. It looks pretty awesome. And then we have Golden Kamui, one of my favorite seinen series at the moment. It reminds me heavily of One Piece, except from for looking for buried treasure in an island, they have to find buried gold in Japan. And the map is tattooed on the skin of all of these prisoners and they're hunting down the prisoners and killing them and skinning them and then gonna put the map together so they can find the treasure and it's pretty awesome there's some hot dudes in there it definitely makes you question your sexuality 
a lot, a lot, a lot. All the men are handsome, beefy, funny dude. This this guy, Shiraishi, is my favorite. He's the funniest dude ever in existence. I think he's my favorite character of all time. Plus the anime, the voice actor does him justice as well. It's great, it's all parts adventure, action, and cooking as well, if you don't mind eating squirrel brain. And then Witch Hatilia, I'm missing volume eight. I've just realized that. It's great, um, no sexualization of the girls. I keep saying this all the time. It's great because of that. Most of the young girls I see in anime and manga are normally sexualized and I always feel a little bit uncomfortable. These guys aren't, it's great. And it's full of mystery. And I wanna know more about the world. I wanna know more about their magic. And I want there to be some sort of time skip and I want Coco to be the best, amazing wizard witch ever. I don't think, I think they're all called all witches. Even the males are called witches. Look back, Tayo Matsumoto, it's only here because it's tall. Otherwise I would've stuck it with Chainsaw Man down below. I can't really explain it too well because I feel like it spoils it because one shots are just weird like that. Trojan X, my girl who did Tokyo Ghoul. Um, very, it's like Tokyo Ghoul 2.0, basically. A little bit more action. Children of the Whales, I haven't picked this one up. Uh, Manga Cat suggested this one. So I'll be picking, I'll be reading this soon. Crazy Food Truck, it's okay. I'll want to get the third volume, then I'll read it all again. And then, I don't know, maybe I'll just give it away or something. Lost Lad London, this is great. If you enjoy Sherlock, Luther, or any kind of like UK mystery uh, detective series, it's going to be right up your alley. Um, yeah, it's great. Anyone who lives in the UK should buy this and read it and yeah i'm just amazed that they a japanese person put so much thought and effort into an english-based manga they got everything on point it was mental and then we have uh, what is this a silent voice oh it's too high for my little hands and they're getting so tired a silent voice really good um similar to a sign of affection the main girl is deaf and the other boy is blind but this like Resolves, revolves around bullying and then towards the end of things get resolved. Some things don't because at the end of the day, life is like that. You know, not everything can be wrapped up in a nice little pretty, little pretty bow. Some things just seep out of the box and they just ooze forever and just burn the box and things are burnt forever. Skip and Loafer, really enjoyed this one. Um, kind of like Comey Com Can't Communicate. And then even though we're adults, if you like gossip and talk to your work colleagues about drama, you'll enjoy this one. Um, it's a girl's love, and one of the girls is married, the other girl's single, the guy finds out. It, it gets crazy, it gets mental. They all go to the park together at one point for some reason, I don't know, with her neighbour, it's, it's weird. And then we have High School of the Dead, just zombies and boobs. That's, that's, I'm sure we've all seen the memes and images and whatnot. Succubus and Hitman, that one's kind of weird. There's a lot of uh, forced sexual advances and a lot of stabbings and knives and then they add video game elements to it like a leveling up system and thing and it's a bit all over the place but i'm kind of invested already even though it's only i've only read two volumes i'm just intrigued to see what the main plot will be in volume three um and hopefully another person dies because i think there's only four bad guys and one of them's already dead by the same manga who wrote Dorohedoro. this just got announced for a box set for just these four volumes, which I don't understand. Volume five only just came out. Yeah, if you enjoy Doro Hedoro, you'll enjoy this. A lot more comedy. Madoka Magica, really enjoyed it the first time I watched the anime. Didn't enjoy it the, second, the first time I read it or the second time. I think the punch at the end of volume of episode 10, when it happened in the last volume, it didn't hit as hard. So I think I might get rid of this one. Flying Witch, nice little slice of life witch series about a girl who does magic and I've only read the first two volumes, so I can't really remember. It's been a while, been a few years. I picked up volume eight because it was like two pound. Ridiculous. Then we have Attack on Titan, Shingeki no Chikyojin. I think this is probably, I always say One Piece is my favorite manga of all time. I don't know if this is gonna top it, but this has everything that I enjoy about manga. It has love, suspense, mystery, and everything. And at the back here, we have, oh, I don't know if you can, oh, let me get this up here. Oh, my arms, let me just, oh man, my arms. And then, yeah, it's just great, it's amazing. I wanna get the Colossal Editions. I don't know where I put them, but I would love to have them. And then I have Lost Girls 1 and 2, which is basically side stories about Annie and Mikasa. And then No Regrets 1 and 2, which is like Levi's backstory of like where he grew up. And then Before the Fall, which I think is like 100 or 200 years before this setting of Attack on Titan, or maybe even longer. And 
I've only got the first volume, the second volume, because uh, I think I got it in like as a giveaway sort of thing. Um, so I have that. Before the Fall is um, out of print and out of stock anyway. And then we have Black Lagoon, 1 to 12. This is like Golden Kamui, but girls with guns and they shoot people in the face and all other parts of the body and kick boys in the groin and they're just badass and it's great. Then Ragnar Crimson, I've read volume one. I've forgotten almost everything in it. I think there's a guy who has some sort of special ability or something. He's like, I can't remember, either a dragon. I vaguely remember none of it. So I'm gonna read it again, along with volume two, which I just picked up. We have Hell's Paradise, one to 13. I just caught up to volume 12, I think. Super great, they're thrown on a desert island to find the elixir of life to free themselves from imprisonment. And whoever brings it back to the emperor um, can win. And it looks like there is no such thing as the elixir of life, or maybe there is. And there's loads of monsters on the island. They've got to kill them. It's, it's great, it's awesome. Drifting Dragons, I'm still thoroughly enjoying this. It's, as Bourne has said, it's adventure for adventure's sake. They just go out on their airship and they find dragons, they kill them, they sell their meat, they sell their oils for medicine and they make leather, they make money. And the money they make from the dragon, they just use to make their ship better, pay their employees and just do the same thing again. To be fair, I do feel a little bit sad for the dragons because they're just killing for no reason. The dragons aren't doing anything. They're not attacking any towns. But it's still good, and the art is beautiful. It kind of gives me like Studio Ghibli kind of vibes. Then we have Rooster Fire. These are also in the wrong order, and I'm scared that if I move them, they will drop. It is about a rooster that kills Kaiju. So it's basically Kaiju number eight meets One Punch Man because he kills everything pretty quick. He's just a stone cold badass cock. Dora Hedro, I have a lot more volumes than this. Um, they are actually in a haul that I need to do. They're in a bag. Um, and once I finish it, hopefully I'll be able to collect it by the end of the year. I will then be able to start it. I would like to finish it by the end of the year because Hell's Paradise and Dora Hedera were the only series this year that I really wanted to finish and collect. And then these are just a bunch of single volumes that I've accumulated over the last like 12 months that I haven't got around to reading. Hakume and Mikochi, I'm not very good at reading sideways. Under Ninja, Welcome to the Ballroom, Claymore, and Witches I still haven't finished and I haven't even started Summertime Rendering, but I will at some point. Then we have, I think this is the last shelf, uh, Tista, same mangaka as Spy Family. Everyone's favorite Spy Family, along with My Dress of Darling from last year, Spy Family swept the manga shelves. Everyone was just eating this up. Dude's a spy, marries an assassin for his spy mission and adopts a daughter to infiltrate the school so they can, you know, kill the bad guy who is trying to take over the world. Uh, really slice of lifey, to be honest. Less action-y than you'd think. And then Full Metal Alchemist. This is probably the first series that I finished in my collection when I was younger. If you like action, a little bit of world building, a little bit of mystery, then this is right up your alley. If you enjoy something like Attack on Titan, this is like Attack on Titan, but it's less brutal. And then Dun Dun Dun, New Age Shonen Supernatural series. Ah, the kids love this one, man. And I can understand why. It's so out of, out of this world. Uh, Shy, this one should actually be up here because I haven't read this one either. And so I don't know anything about it. I think it's about Spy and she's shy. I don't know. Superheroes and she's shy. That's a superpower. I don't know. Furin, I'm behind on this. I just got confirmation like a couple of weeks ago that volume five has been dispatched. Um, it hasn't come yet. No money's come out of my account. And I also have a volume five in my uh, bag for my, my next manga haul. So I have three copies potentially, but maybe the third one won't come. Uh, Oshinoko, idols and some weird mystery stuff, man. I don't think that the, the, the plot twist for the first volume matters probably after this volume, I can imagine. It doesn't really, I don't, maybe it does, but I don't think it will probably play a big role. So I don't think it's that important anymore. School Frozen in Time, this is pretty awesome. I think it's the same artist who did Your Lie in April, which is why I picked it up. It was pretty good. Um, they get frozen in time in their high school and then they have to figure out how to get out, basically. A um, little bit of mystery. All the characters go through like their own backstories and stuff. Our Dreams at Dusk, I think the boy is like not too sure if he's gay. And then he finds a bunch of people who are like, kind of not necessarily like-minded, but they accept him. And then it's about his quest to finding himself and also um, being accepted by some of the school kids and stuff. And then After the Rain, this is the last one in the collection. It's an age gap, but that's what most people tell you, but it's definitely not. To me, it doesn't feel like an age gap. It's more about a young girl who idolizes her manager 
and though he may take some advantages of like letting her look after his son and that kind of thing he doesn't do anything she's more it's kind of like if a girl found i don't know freaking leonardo dicaprio johnny depp they'd want to be like they'd want to talk to him they'd want to you know hold his hand and maybe give him a kiss on the cheek it just so happens that the guy she idolizes some middle-aged balding smoking damn she's that hits too close to home Anyways, that is my manga collection. I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's go back to the stream. Well, that's my collection. I don't know how many volumes there are. Probably close to like 800, maybe just over. There's a few other things that I have. I have some stuff at my parents' house um, at my sister's as well. And also I have the Akira box set here. Um, but I can't stick that on the shelf. It'll just boop, 